Hey, it's George Arbogast, creator and producer of the Salvage Up Cycle Show. I'm here in Durham, North Carolina. I'm hanging out with a really fantastic artist, Bryant Holsenbeck. She does environmental art, uses all reclaimed, repurposed, and upcycled material. Everything from bigger than life-size installations to wonderful little sculptures you can hold in your hands. She's even got a book per year spent living without disposable plastic. She's a real inspiration to all of us who are looking to add creative reuse into our own efforts or maybe just change our lifestyle a little bit. So stay tuned for this episode of the Salvage Upcycle Show. My name is Brian Tolsenbeck and I'm an environmental artist. I make art out of stuff that people normally throw away or don't need anymore. Um, I want people to pay attention to the world around them and use their resources better. Um, I don't know what else to say. How long have you um, made I don't this know. a focus on I have art? no idea. I have no idea, but I started out as a basket maker, hunting and gathering, and when I started picking up all this natural stuff, I thought, like, look at that other man-made stuff that's right there that can be used to make something, and people were just ignoring that. And I did not want people to ignore all the stuff that people throw away, because where's away? Can you tell me where away is? Well, it's like you said, either the ocean or the landfill or right. something like and that. And the landfill, you know, it's just uh, the landfill is going to be bigger than us, bigger than the world if we don't watch out. You know, we need to really, I feel like that in the United States we have, we have rich and then we have space. So we can keep buying new stuff and, um, and then we have the space to hide the stuff we throw away. You know, and I don't think that's a great idea. We're working on a book that I wrote uh, from a blog that I wrote called The Last Straw about living without single-use plastic for a year. What do you think is the hardest part about living without single-use plastic? Eating. Absolutely. Absolutely. Why is that? Well, um, you know, where's, what's everything packaged in? Try to find some potato chips if you if you don't want to. It's all plastic. People say, "Oh, that's silver. That's it's, well, yeah, silver. It's mylar. It's that's plastic. That's not aluminum. You know, it's not. And there's nothing full circle about it. Um, so um, because I had the farmers market, I ate really fresh, and I might take some potato chips from your plate, but I didn't have any. And you know, all, and so it, along with the eating, and I could go. Um, a lot of grocery stores still have a place that you know you, you don't have to have it all packaged. But and I can make my own cookies. I was thinking that oh no, I can't have chocolate chips. But actually, there's there's the the co-ops have chocolate chip bins, so I could do it. I I do stuff with bunches of plastic bottles and all kinds of stuff installations. What do you think? draws people to your art? Is it the art or is it the reuse? Is it a combination of both? I think it has to be beautiful or people don't want it. So I, 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 I hope the story gets told, but it's, um, I have no control about whether you listen to that story or not. I have no control. This pile started because I was at another big craft school and there was a whole trash can full of these warp ends and they're so beautiful. And so I began to make animals just with them. Like if this is solid sort of, this is really, really scrap. It's just scrap. I have other weaver friends that are, um, This is all, um, look how beautiful that fabric is. And this is all, you know, they're making some really fine materials. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and then they're, they're making coats and jackets and stuff. And so, and then they're giving me what's there left over. Did, did you notice all my monofilament that I've got there? Uh, I have it outside, there's oh, some here. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah. it's all behind me, it's all behind me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And we noticed uh, heron was out of the same mm -hmm. kind of material. That's right. Yeah, That's so right. Cool. That's a big problem in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And so my stuff is a lot about the problems in the ocean and 
and when I go to the coast, I got a whole box of uh, just plastics for, that I pick up at the ocean. Um, and I make stuff out of it. There's an environmental story involved, and I do make it into animals sometimes, but I really want people to be aware of the story of we gotta stop, we gotta start not, not doing this. Yeah, he's looking better, see? See that chicken? Yeah, he doesn't have a tail yet. I don't know what's to, I have to think about what's to, I can't talk and figure it out, and he's a bee, he needs some stuff. But oh, he's not gonna stand up yet. I tell students too, I, I like to make stuff more than I like to paint stuff. I'm a 3D person, so. And that's just, I don't know what that's about, but I'm not a painter. Person. Oh, you want to take a painting class? No, I don't. I want to take a hammer and a nail and this and figure out how to put it together. That's what I want to do. But some of it is just looking around for what I've got. But you know, you might find something else on the way to what you thought. I think you have to really look at your animal. But, but, you, but that's, um, that's a comic chicken though. You know, but that's just a chicken for, but that's a comic chicken. Um, that's, that's a donut and that's my Roomba vacuum cleaner. And, ooh, and I forgot the wings too. Hmm. I don't want that for my wings. I forgot my chicken wings. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's what I have to I think do. she likes you better than me, Mackenzie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She just, I don't know why. Whenever I talk to her, she just smiles at me. She's easier to look at, I guess. Yeah, well, I, uh, that's not, I won't take that as an offense. No, no, no. Oh, gotcha. I gotta get his wings in. And is, I'm not gonna stick his wings on. They don't have stuck on wings. They have wings that are part of them. She said orange. So I'm just going to see. <laughs> She's good. She can stay in my studio. Okay. She's really good. I'm just going to go outside. You guys hang out for a little while. She's good. And she'll give me the footage when you're done. She's good. <laughs> Tell them it's not about liking and not liking. <laughs> That's some kind of a rotten. Look at that thing. It's like a rotten part of a ball, like a, like a rubber ball or something. Ugly, but looks like it might be a nice thing here. Looks so, like a beak to me. Uh -huh. You kind of get that attitude right, and it, maybe you have to do something to his feet to make him stand up. It doesn't feel like his feet are big enough for what he's got going on at top, uh -huh. and that often happens when your chicken starts eating stuff. And but I get you know whatever. So now now that chicken wants to go over here and talk to this guy and go like, okay, I am all Bryant's gonna do to me today. And then Bryant, what she does for five minutes is she cleans up. I don't know where my thing is, but for five minutes I have to clean up. I think I wanna communicate what I see, but uh, I think art is a good way to communicate. And maybe people will get the same message and maybe they just think it's a cute animal. But maybe they might think, I'm, it's this thing made out of.